What's going on guys? Hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the studio and today is Star Wars Day, so happy May the 4th. Wait a second. Sorry, there's something missing. One second. Just for this one video. That is a lot better. Welcome to Star Wars Day and today I thought I would take the opportunity to talk about the Force. And more specifically, card forces. What is the best card force for a magician. But before we get into that, here's some b-roll of the Star Wars playing cards. So, I hope you're having a great Star Wars day. In case you can't tell, I'm a massive Star Wars nerd. Treated myself to uh, a couple of Lego sets that I might have accidentally bought today. <laughs> accidentally. Accidentally, he says, as if that wasn't completely on purpose. Anyway, enough of the chit chat, enough of the rambling. Today, we're going to be talking about what is the best card force. I'll be straight with you here, there isn't a simple answer to this question. If there was one card force that was better than all of them in all situations, then that's the card force that we'd all use. The reason there are so many is because they're all used in different situations. So let's start with the classic force, okay? The original classic force. This is an old, old force. Magicians have been using this one for ages, and I can see why, because it is really effective. You spread the cards, they take one. It just feels very, very fair and natural. However, it does take a lot of practice, and during that practice, some of the forces you're gonna miss. You're not going to be able to get them to pick the card that you want. And I'm not gonna explain the classic force in this video because there just isn't time for that. That deserves a whole masterclass on its own, and I'm not gonna cover that in this video. But there are lots of alternatives to the classic force. Because any force where the cards are spread and the spectator chooses one, be it by touching one or actually taking one out of the deck and there being some sort of switch, there are so many variations of a force that involves a spread. And that is fair, because the number of cards you're showing a spectator at this point just feels really, really good. Recently, I've been thinking so much about fairness in magic. How do we make our magic seem more fair? And I did a whole video over on Patreon really recently talking about fairness and a whole theory I have on that, as well as teaching uh, the number one peak I use to locate any card in a deck that is super, super fair. And when I was thinking about fairness, one of the things that I really thought of was the idea of choice. How much choice does the spectator have in a trick? So when you're doing this, yeah, it feels really, really fair. There is so much choice. Some people might argue that a riffle force gives you just as much choice, if not more, because you really are giving them the chance to go at every single card. And it's more random as well that way. They really don't know which card they're selecting, whereas here, they can deliberate, they can change their mind a little bit more. However, this is very, very closed off. The amount of space this takes up physically is very, very small. And I think psychologically, if it takes up a small amount of space, it feels like a narrower choice. So simply widening the parameters, literally widening their choice makes it feel really, really fair. So there's different avenues you can go down. I certainly think the Riffle Force has its place and it's something that I do use, but a classic force, you just can't beat it. And if you are going to do it, then don't be one of the people that keeps it really, really narrow and you know hardly any cards are available. It's okay to take a risk and have more cards on show if it makes for a better trick. And if you miss, well, it's not the end of the world, you can do other tricks. A card force always has to have a fallback option in case you miss the card. No matter what force you're doing, it can go wrong in some way. Just by fluke or by, you know, messing up the trick in some way, you need to have a fallback. And having those tricks that don't rely on a force is really, really important. Although obviously a force is a superpower and it's something that I think every magician should know, you gotta have your backups, you know? That, that's, that's what's gonna catch you out. Some of the forces I'm not a fan of, if I have to sort of pick one, is the ones where it feels very, very unnatural, where cards are being dealt in a strange way. I mean, one of my least favorite forces is the cut deeper force. I just don't think that that's effective enough. I've certainly not come across a presentation in which that is effective, because why do you need to cut and then turn over and then cut and then turn over, it just feels very, very forced, <laughs> for want of a better word. It feels so unnatural. I just feel like cutting the packet and turning it and cutting it again, that whole process feels just like that. It feels like a process that you have to go to in order for the trick to work. 
and that is something that we absolutely want to avoid as magicians. Something I speak about in my Patreon-only video is the idea of cause and effect, that magic is essentially going against cause to effect and just leaving the spectator with an effect and the cause they don't know and it's our job to hide the cause, otherwise known as the method. And if the magician is constantly performing unusual acts and unusual little movements, well essentially we're handing the spectator on a plate potential causes. You know, all that weird moment where he flipped the packets and he, he got me to cut deeper and all that, all that weirdness that could have been how he did the trick. Even if they don't know exactly what's gone on, the fact that they're even questioning an unusual part of the trick is bad for our magic. Sometimes simpler is better. So, I'm gonna teach you the crosscut force. I never thought I'd say that, but I'm gonna teach you the crosscut force and just a little bit about my presentation and how I make this very, very simple principle convincing. <laughs> So this is the crosscut force, the number one easiest force there is, undoubtedly. And yes, this is really simple, and some of you might be worried about performing this, but I guarantee you that if you just do this trick, if you just go through the motions of doing this trick, then yeah, it won't work. But if you perform it, if you add the presentation, then not only will this fly under the radar, but it will really make sense. If you present it in the right way, it'll just feel right for your audience. So, yeah, it is really simple, and of course I'm not saying this is the best force. Like I said, there isn't a number one best for everyone. You might have your favourites, and I, I wouldn't even say this is my favourite, but it certainly works in certain situations. So you start with the deck being shuffled, the spectator just mixes the cards up to their heart's content, and when you take the deck back, you want to spread through the cards and explain that all the cards are different and they're in a completely random order. And just before you get to the end, just slightly turn it to yourself, not like dramatically like you're hiding something, just slightly, and just glance that uh, top card, the Five of Hearts, because that's the card that's going to be forced. So, once you've got the Five of Hearts, you now explain that you're not going to touch the deck, that this is going to be very, very hands-off and you can step away. And you ask them to cut the deck wherever they want and just place that half right there. So, they cut the deck, and they place it there. And now, as you're talking, and as the spectator is slightly on and off beat, you know, they've done their work, they've done their bit of the trick, they're not going to be focusing that much here. So, you can take this half right here, and just pop it on top. And notice what this does, because right here, we have a random card, Ten of Hearts, but right here, underneath, which is really, really important, we have the Five of Hearts. Because that feels, because it's underneath, it feels like that's where they cut to. It's such a bizarre bit of psychology. Obviously the one on top, that just feels like the top card. But the one here, that feels like something completely random. And you can even just move the, the packet slightly, just to sort of dislocate it slightly from that exact location. I just push it a tiny, tiny amount so that it doesn't feel quite so like it's come from that place. Whatever presentation works for you, whatever you're about to go into, that's a good thing to talk about at this point, and then you return to the packet and you say, you cut right here at this exact location which we marked just by uh, sort of cross-cutting the, or crisscrossing the, the decks rather. So now for the first time, look at the card that you cut to. And again, I've taken this out of the picture now, they can't see this, this is under the table, it can go in my pocket, it's away. Just so that there's not more than one packet for them to get confused on, and also so that they can't go, oh wasn't it that one? You know, if it's right here, that it looks too similar, they can get mixed up, so just take this one straight out of the picture like I did. And now they'll look at this card, and it's the top card. <laughs> They're just looking at the top card of the deck. This isn't where they cut, it doesn't matter where they cut. They look right at this one and they remember it. And then whatever trick you want to go into, if it's a prediction, that's a little bit simple, but you can do a prediction, or you can go into something much more dramatic. You know, you can have the deck mixed up again with their card that they've selected, and then you can spray the cards at a window and do card through window. I mean, the possibilities of a force are endless. It will make you feel like a Jedi. Now, before we were talking about fairness, and we were saying what is the fairest way of doing a force? And sure, something like this can feel fair, and spreading the cards can feel like a big choice, and you can make any force seem fair through presentation, but what's really holding all of these forces back is the deck itself, is the reliance on a prop, is the reliance on the cards themselves. What is the ultimate way of having them choose something is by simply getting them to think of it. If you're able to just say, think of a card, and then name a card. And obviously there are a bunch of psych forces you can do, and I recommend those, of course, I think psych forces are great. But what's really great 
is being able to have full control, to not have any weird presentation in order to psych force, to just say to them, name any card, and then name the card that you want them to. And if you know about pre-show, you know that this is possible. Being able to set someone up beforehand to name a specific card so that when you do, in person, literally just point to them and go name any card, they'll name the one that they saw before. And to everyone else, it will look like a genuine Jedi mind trick. This is the card you're looking for. <laughs> you know, it's, it's incredible. And yeah, I, I think that that, that is the perfect force, being able to do it hands-free. Being a great magician is understanding that it's about them, not us, and so being able to let go of our props just for a minute to give them a really magical experience, I think that's worth it. So there we have it, that is this video on card forces, on forcing, and, and being able to, to do it in a really fair way. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it and rambling about card forces. If you did enjoy this video and you want to help me out, the best way of doing that is by clicking the thumbs up button down below and subscribing to the channel if you are new and you've never seen a video from me before. Uh, you can join this growing community by subscribing. And I realize now that I never actually said on camera, thank you for 10,000 subscribers. So thank you for 10,000 subscribers. Seriously, that is incredible. Absolutely ludicrous. I've never had 10,000 of anything. So to have an audience of 10,000, yeah, is absolutely wild. So thank you so much. It honestly means the world to me. And uh, yeah, I mean, the reason I didn't say thank you originally was because I was always behind. I was saying thank you for 5,000. And then by the time I'd edited the video, I was on 8,000 and I kept doing that. It just felt ridiculous. So I had to cut it out. And uh, yeah, honestly, just the, the rate that the channel grew uh, recently has been fantastic. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Don't think for a second that I don't appreciate it. Um, so yeah, unbelievable. I think that's everything. Happy May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, of course. I am going to watch a Star Wars. I, what better day? I'm going to build my Lego. I'm going to watch a Star Wars. Yes, I'm a child. <laughs> I will see you very soon for more videos. Until then, stay safe. I think you're going to have to be Are you going to have to go there?